for the best DRA in baseball, but that hasn't bothered the home team. Seven big flies in two games for the Nats offense, including a hat trick for Adam Dunn. Tonight, they go for the sweep against Matt Latos, the Padres' best first-half pitcher. It's a great day for baseball. Guess who's batting first for the Nats tonight? Of course, it's Niger Morgan going for the sweep. And Josh Willingham, next time he hits a home run, he'll have 16. Padres and the Nats, game three. But a tough guy on the mound for the Nationals to face tonight. But so far, the San Diego pitching doesn't seem to have bothered Washington very much. Well, it's raised a lot of guys' games up to that A level. And it's the best pitching staff in baseball by far uh, statistically. And Matt Latos is going to be no exception for a guy like Adam Dunn. Uh, Adam Dunn's going to be looking to drive the ball like he did off John Garland last night. Uh, hit three home runs and showed why he's still one of the best slugging first baseman outfielder slash in the major leagues. He's still getting uh, a lot of things done over first base. He's improving on a daily basis. You see him picking it out of the dirt. But this is why he was brought to Washington, uh, the big lumber. And part of the Dunn Lumber Company swinging that bat, hitting a home run almost every 14.6 times per since he's been with the Nationals, his career is 14.1. So, the bottom line is, Bob, when this guy's up at the plate, he stands a good chance of maybe going deep or, or changing the outcome of a ball game. Adam Dunn's career batting average coming into this year, 249. He's up in the 280 range. He's the big popper in the middle of this lineup, and his contract situation will be an interesting one, hopefully addressed after the season, because we sure hope he stays a Washington National. Ryan Zimmerman has been outstanding against the Padres in this series and the other series in San Diego. Out there, he was 3 for 11 with a couple of home runs. In this series, he's 5 out of 8 with a homer and 3 RBIs. How about 8 for 19 against that really good San Diego pitching staff this year for the number 3 hitter? by AT&T, Rethink Possible, and by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. It's another hot one in our nation's capital, cooling off just a little bit from the last couple of nights. Hazy skies overhead, fans still coming down Half Street, and the Nats have a chance to sweep the team that still has 
one of the best records in the National League. Atlanta slightly better than San Diego. And the Padres, Adrian Gonzalez, a homer, four RBI, six for nine in this series. He's the one threat, the one true threat in their lineup. And he's also hitting 381 with runners in scoring position. Luis Adelano, 25 years of age. And for the Nats, Rob, he'll make his 15th start. He's doing a good job. Last outing wasn't the greatest of uh, his Nationals career. Only lasted uh, three and two-thirds. PNC Bank Scouting Reports brought to you by PNC for the achiever in us all. Pound the zone. Go right after these guys. Be careful with Adrian Gonzalez. He's got 17 homers and 54 RBI. The rest of the lineup, 21 homers, 134 RBI. And use your emotions to your advantage. Go out there, and if you're going to be emotional, uh, use it in a positive manner. Buddy Black switches things up tonight. Jerry Hairston is his leadoff man. After Tony Gwynn went hitless in the first two games of the series. And we're underway with a strike at 7.06. Mostly clear skies and 91 degrees. Seven degrees cooler than last night. Nine degrees cooler than Tuesday. Adelano misses low and away to Hairston. Who's hitting 245 with an on base percentage of 286? Jerry in this series, four for 10. Brother Scott has a couple of hits and an RBI. But the Padres really haven't had anything from the leadoff spot. Tony Gwynn went 0 for 8 with a walk in the first two games. Got a change up or a breaking ball that backed up and almost change hit up. him. Circle change. 12-year veteran Mike Everett has the plate. Adrian Johnson, crew chief Tim McClelland, Andy Fletcher have the bases. Padres on the road, 22 and 16. The Nats at home, 24 and 18. And Washington's won four of its last six. A little bit away. Shaping up as a good homestand. Tonight would be a major step forward. With the Giants coming in, they're at Milwaukee tonight. Actually, they played today and put nine on the board against the Brewers and beat them nine to three. They may be in town before this game's over. Three two to the first hitter of the game. I mean, you'd like to get in a situation where you have two outs, nobody on when Gonzalez comes up to the plate. Want to try to break that streak of giving up early runs in the first inning. Mm -hmm. What is it, seven in a row now, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's not good. You put yourself in a hole every night. Steve McCaddy's staff, 4.16 overall ERA, number 11 in the National League. Adelano gets a pop up left side for Ryan Zimmerman. We're covering the bases with Ryan tonight. Only fitting that he would make the first play of the game. Here's the rest of the Nats defense done across from him. It's Desmond and Kennedy up the middle again tonight. Niger Morgan flanked by Josh Willingham, Roger Bernardina, and Pudge Rodriguez playing every day. He's behind the plate. Adam Kennedy played some second base, played some first base late last night. And here's Chase Headley. He lines one to the gap in right center. He had been batting fifth in this series. That'll be his fifth hit in ten at bats. They had Headley batting two hitters behind Gonzalez, and they decided to put him in front of Gonzalez tonight. Kinetic here on the pitch track. It's going to be a sinker that doesn't go sinking enough away from Headley, and he smokes it into right center field. So as Bob said, moved up the order because he's been hitting the ball really well. Once again, not a lot of home run threats other than this man standing 60 feet from him. And do we need to remind you that first base is open? I know it's early. But if you don't let this guy beat you, who's going to? In this series... The Padres have scored 11 runs in two games, and Gonzalez has driven in four of those. With runners in scoring position, 381, fourth best in the National League. And, Rob, that's really something considering he gets very little protection in this lineup. 
Change up about three feet outside, two and oh. Well, he just does a great job of recognizing pitches that are hittable for him. Even last night, the home run he hit to the opposite field and put him on now. But this uh, injured my last year, 96, watching Gary Sheffield. Almost the same, similar situation. Not a lot of protection. Ended up hitting 42 home runs that year. And maybe got one or two chances a night to swing the bat at something decent. And he would make it. It would make it count when he hit it. Yeah. Well, reminiscent of Barry Bonds and some of the very light hitting Giants teams he was in the middle of. Didn't he walk like 240 something times was, one year? It was crazy. Why pitch to him? Well, but I mean, that's part of and, and I understand what Jim Riggleman's saying. That's part of the game. You know, I mean, you don't want to always have to intentionally walk in Adrian Gonzalez. You'd like to think that your guys could be successful in, uh, you know, hitting their spots and locating some pitches and tying his hands up. But with first base open, why take a chance when you're down 2-0 and in the count? Two on, one out. Scott Hurston, the hitter. Three finals today. We told you San Francisco won at Milwaukee. Roy Oswalt threw a one hitter at home and the Astros beat the Pirates 2-0. And St. Louis lost again at Colorado. Ubaldo Jimenez is 15-1. and one. A 4-2 win there. Buddy Black's Padres three up on the Rockies and the Dodgers starting today. Now it's only two and a half over Colorado. Who have leapfrogged over L.A. into second place. That ball was hanging up waiting to be hit. Headley around third. Willingham hits the cutoff man. Bases loaded one out. What is going on with the national starters in these first innings? Well, this pitch is supposed to be a breaking ball down. It stays up in the zone, and Hairston smacks it into left field. So, a couple of very hittable pitches to Headley and Hairston. Got to be convicted. You got to be convinced in whatever you're going to throw, you throw it with all your might. And you don't, uh, you know, give up stuff for location. Rob, the last time a Nat starter had a scoreless first inning was Craig Stammen at Atlanta on three ground balls nine days ago. So the Padres trying to make it eight games in a row in which the Nats have given up first inning runs. Yorvit Torrealba, the catcher, one for four with an RBI here on Tuesday night. Adelano gives up first inning runs more than two out of every three starts. Well, it just puts yourself in a hole. Now you're now you're having to make every pitch count. When you try to throw perfect pitches, you usually hang them. That ball out to left center. It'll drop to the left of Willingham. One nothing. The bases loaded merry-go-round continues, and the Nats have been burned again. Kinetic right here. He's going to try to pull down on a breaking pitch. Obviously, it's not working. It's staying up in the zone, and it gets hit hard again. And so Tori Alba says, "Thank you very much for the hanging breaking ball." So a couple of hanging breaking balls and a sinker that didn't sink, and that's how Adelano got himself into trouble so far. Cunningham, as we have seen in this series, a very aggressive young hitter. He's been in the big leagues for less than three weeks. Two for seven with a couple of RBIs in this series. Six game hitting streak for the young man from Anchorage, Alaska, and he's hitting 310. And his only home run this year was a grand slam. Reds and the Phillies are underway up the road. Atlanta's off tonight. The Marlins later at Arizona. In the East, Atlanta by three over the Mets, six over the Phillies. Marlins nine and a half back. The Nats are 12 back. And trying not to big or dig too big of a hole here in the first inning. 
up the middle. Adelano has it. Has to wait for the shortstop. And Desmond turns the 1-6-3. He was ready to throw before anybody was at the back, and the Nats are out of the inning. Seventy six homers on the year, ninth in the league, seven in this series. Ian Desmond has two of them. He's gone deep back to back nights, three for six with a couple of RBIs and a walk in this series. And suddenly his bat has come alive after a prolonged cold streak. Zimmerman, Dunn, and Willingham continue to be outstanding in the middle of the Nationals' order. Tonight it's Matt Lados, 13 and 9 career record, his 27th career start, 17th this year. Well, the kid is good. He should be an all-star. PNC Bank scouting report, all-star stuff. Leads the major leagues in batting average against. You heard that in the pregame show. 193, 16 starts, 9 and 4, 70 hits and 100 innings pitched. Hit this in his career, 150 innings pitched, only 113 hits allowed. That's a career batting average against of 207. And he's like a Steven Strasburg. They're only going to limit him. They're going to limit his pitches to 150 to 170 this year. You mean innings? Innings pitch. Excuse okay. me. I say pitches. I apologize. He's trying to get a lot in there. He's also got uh, like a Strasburg. He's Strasburg's probably got an 80 on the 20 to 80 scout scale. This kid's got a 70. Hmm. Oh, and too quickly to Niger Morgan. Bernardina Zimmerman to follow. Niger two for nine in the series. Both times he's been on base, he has scored a run. Reaches out and strokes a one hopper to Everth Cabrera. And uh, Adrian Gonzalez just saved him a throwing error. Two time Gold Glover with a great pick. He really is by far the best player on this team across from Headley. Cabrera, Jerry Hairston up the middle. Kristen Orfia gets a stop, a start in center after homering here last night. And your Vitorialba will catch his second game of the series. How good is that guy? Fantastic. And if he does get traded, somebody will wel welcome him with open arms. Yeah, and there might be a revolution in San Diego. It, it, it would be tough. If they're in first place and they can't offer him an extension, you know, it's going to be tough to watch that guy get traded. But you know what? Their fans aren't going to look at it that way, Rob. They're going to look at it as if the Padres won't offer him an extension. Well, and Kevin Towers said that he was actually happy that he didn't have to trade him a couple of years ago uh, when the White Sox wanted Jake Peavy. That Great changeup. Freed up some uh, salary room. He was able to keep Adrian in-house. Now Kevin Towers was let go last year. Jed Hoyer now the general manager. That's a fastball that rings up Bernardino. Wow. First career home run on a cold night at Shea Stadium four, almost four and a half years ago against 
Billy Wagner that won a game for the Nats in extra innings. Well, and he was just up against Billy Wagner in the final vote. And neither one of them made it. It was Joey Votto, but Zim, see him taking the 100 mile an hour lefty deep. Guess who just celebrated with a first inning home run Joey at Votto. Philadelphia? Joey Votto. Joey Votto just hit his 22nd homer. Congratulations to a most deserving All Star. And everybody on that list deserved to be an All Star, including this guy. And Charlie Manuel said today if there's a spot, Latos will be his next starting pitcher's mm -hmm. pick. Remember, this kid's 6'6, six, six, so you're going to see a lot of things coming downhill. Throws almost over the top. Well, let's just say he does throw over the top. The league's hitting 193 against him. Zimmerman, crazy good now over the last few games. By the way, that opponent's batting average, the best in the National League. Best in the Major League. In fact, I was just about to look <laughs> up the American <laughs> League base. leader, and that's John Lester at 204. There you Toughest go. guys to hit. National League. That's Sanchez of San Francisco. We'll see him. Lados is also eighth in RBIs. I'm sorry, in ERA, but nobody can get Ryan Zimmerman out all of a sudden. And Zimmerman is six out of nine in this series. Anytime he can extend an inning and get Adam Dunn up there, that'll be big for the Nats. Well, he's a guy that throws downhill. He's a lot like Josh Johnson in that respect, that you're going to see a lot of different uh, visuals as a hitter. And our first couple of guys didn't look so hot against him, but Zim st stood in there, whacked it back up the middle, and now the guy who had three home runs last night, Bob, steps in. For the first time. It was Adam Dunn's 26th multi-homer game. And that's quite a while to go before you hit three. But some great hitters have gone beyond that. Right now, Vladimir Guerrero has 42 career multi-homer games without hitting three. And an interesting note that we were sent by our friend John Dever in the Nationals front office. Babe Ruth did it 52 times before he hit three homers in a game. Uh, How about that? Games. 52 multi-homer games before he hit three. So the name yeah. was quite amazing. 94 wins as a pitcher. Yeah. There's a bouncer. Hits the catcher, then hits Dunn. Let's have a look at our Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races League leaders. Home runs. Well, at bats per home run, and Mark McGuire, the all-time leader. But Adams on that list. It's pretty good. Once every 14 trips to the plate, he's going to go yard. Pretty much indicates how dominant Babe Ruth was before all these modern sluggers came along. Nat Settle for the Zimmerman base hit and trail 1-0. RBI by Tori Alba.
And the double play ball kept Adelano and the Nats from a bigger deficit. Steven Strasburg tickets. Yeah, they're Nats tickets. They're still available for tomorrow night. 7 o'clock game against the Giants. 888-632-NATS. Nationals.com and some sweet tickets as an S-U-I-T-E have been released. Minimum two per purchase at $95 a piece. You can ask about those if you'd like to keep cool climate-controlled comfort at the ballpark tomorrow. How about some of the pitching the Nats will see? Latos tonight, Matt Kane tomorrow. Here's Kristen Orpia. Sanchez, one of those other days. That's right. Dan Orpia, one for three with a pinch hit homer last night. That's a strike of the knees, 0-2. Everett Cabrera, the shortstop, and then Matt Latos for the Padres. Bouncer charged by Desmond. Nice waist high hop. Yeah, it's Kane versus Strasburg, Sanchez versus Stammen on uh, Saturday, and then Sunday will be Levon Hernandez versus their youngster, Madison Bumgarner. Everett Cabrera hitting 200 now. 0 for 5 in the series with a walk. David Eckstein is nursing a sore muscle at the base of his calf. It's right between his Achilles tendon and his calf muscle. And I think David will be ready to play by the weekend from what he told me yesterday. This ball out in the center. Niger Morgan right there. Two outs. Padres are going from here to Colorado. Matt Lato's coming up. Now you talk about a scary looking trailer. How about Predators in theaters tomorrow if you dare. I'm going to be in the safety of our Masson booth here. That's too scary for me at least for now. Will you go with me to that Ron? Sure. Okay. I'll buy the popcorn. <laughs> Here's Matt Latos, four for 25 with a couple of RBIs. And a strike, it's even 1 1. Phillies answered the Joey Votto homer with a run of their own up at Citizens Bank Park. <laughs> and now Shane Victorino is two home runs behind Ryan Howard. He just hit his 14th. Flying Hawaiian. I haven't seen the Phillies in a while. It's okay with me. <laughs> Swing and a miss on a breaking ball outside. Good inning for Adelano. Good hitter coming up. Josh Willingham, followed by Pudge and Kennedy.
Association for IT Pros. And here's outdoor expert Debbie Taylor with our FCS Sideline Report. Well, we are covering the bases today with Ryan Zimmerman. He's been hanging out with Adam Dunn and Josh Willingham, who introduced him to the sport of bass fishing. Ryan kind of wanted to hang out with us. He was getting a little jealous, so he, we got him. He got him fish pole, and we started fishing, and he enjoyed it. So I catching some fish. Does he have potential to be a pretty good fisherman in your eyes? He's pretty limited right now um, in his fishing expertise, but I think uh, in the more he learns from from me and a little from Adam, you know, he's got potential to be a pretty good one. Ryan told me, too, there's probably an off-season fishing trip in the works for the three of them. The uh, middle of the order doing really well on the field and a really tight-knit group off the field as well, Bob. Well, that's great stuff. Enjoying each other, being teammates. It's a long season. And a fastball to Willingham gets the bottom of the second underway. Josh won for six in the series, but he's walked twice. So he always finds a way to get on base, even when not collecting lots of hits. Case in point, his on-base percentage, 412, second best in the National League behind Joey Votto. And just ahead of Albert Pujols. Lados has come out firing here, Rob. He's got good stuff so far. Well, he makes it look easy, free and easy. Throwing all of his pitches. Well, he's 22 years old, 6'6", 220. He said before he's got a fantastic arm, but probably watching our lineup the last two nights, he's not going to throw a lot of 95 mile an hour fastballs. He's already thrown a bunch of changeups. That's a called strike. Willingham thought he held up his swing, and that'll be number three for Lados. Uh, he's got a good slider and a good curveball. The curveball's in the low 70s, so this is a little bit of a tight slider on the outer side. I think he just said he went on the swing. Looks like he did. It's a good slider on the outer half. You see the hammer can't hold up. Budge Rodriguez. One hit in the series, eight at bats, one RBI. Well, the first impressions are accurate. Luis Adelano is going to have to be pretty good to keep this a close ball game tonight. Just his last 10 starts over 64 innings, 38 hits, 65 strikeouts, 17 walks. Ninety four K's in a hundred and one innings now. Here he is from above throwing on that downward incline. Perfect landing. Yep. We have him at 98 on that fastball. This is from the side angle. He's going to come straight over the top and high 90s fastball. Got a little slider in on him. He was a draft and follow like Tommy Hansen of the Braves, where he signed the day before the draft the next year for a million and a half dollars a few years ago. And he misses. He was at a Pudge Rodriguez. And the Nats have their second base runner. Here's our Luna double in the second inning. Get your second room of flooring free at 877-241-LUNA. When teams hit two homers or more, they should win. And the Dodgers, Rays, Nats, and White Sox have been the best in baseball this year. The Nationals have had seven homers, as mentioned, first two games of the series, and they've added two onto their ledger here. Adam Kennedy, a little tapper out to short. Everett Cabrera has one play, and that's Kennedy at first. Ian Desmond is heating it up now. Home runs, back-to-back -back evenings against the best pitching staff in baseball. Clayton Richard can't believe it. 
And then last night, John Garland, you hang it, we'll bang it. Crushes that one out to the batter's eye grass out in center field. Good pitch recognition the last couple of nights by Ian. Chopper outside third. I think you'll see a lot more early swings by our guys. Maybe the first couple of trips through. They don't want to fall behind on Latos. <laughs> I don't blame them. Ian Desmond's last three home runs have come against San Diego pitching. Going back to the end of May. Good recognition. He checked his swing. And here's Latos again with one of those situations we talk about regarding Nationals pitchers. First base open, pitcher up next. Runner in scoring position in a tight ball game early. The Nats walk Adrian Gonzalez back in the first, but then San Diego got two hits. Two and one. Pretty nice slider right there. He dropped to 11th round, 333rd in the draft a few years ago because he was an angry young man in high school. Scouts didn't really appreciate his emotion on the mound, so he's learned to temper that a little bit. He goes off speed and misses three and one. Well, that looked like the slow curveball. See him pull over the top, 12 to 6 curveball at about 80 miles an hour. What a differential. 15 to 17 mile an hour off the fastball. I don't think Desmond wanted to walk. He wanted to swing the bat, but he shows discipline, taking the base on balls. And Luis Adelano, one for 23 as a major league hitter, has a tough job indeed coming up here. Well, and Latos just seems like he can't figure out what he wants to throw. Through a lot of changeups in the first inning, comes back throwing a lot of sliders and breaking balls for balls here in the second inning. Doesn't look like he wants to throw the fastball too much. <laughs> there he did. That yeah, was low in the zone. Had a lot of went up hacking. Well, maybe watching the other team hit seven home runs in two games will at least cause you to think about things. But those two pitchers the Nats have faced in this series, while good arms, Richard and Garland, they don't have this kind of stuff. That's tardy. Strike two. Remember, he's still very young when it comes to uh, starts in the major leagues. So sometimes, uh, including Clayton Richard, you hold back too much in the early innings. Field around to the right if he makes contact that way. Strikes out. The ball came up and glanced possibly off of Adelano, who was alertly running to first base, at least requiring the throw. And the Nats have stranded three runners.
Zimmerman and Zim on Zim. A lot of different plays and a lot of different arm angles and catching the ball all over the place. He has to do down at third base, and he described the one where he has to go to his right over the foul line. If you can, you want to set your feet and make a strong throw. I think any time that you can do that, it's obviously more beneficial to you. And, and Adam, obviously, if you can get it around where he's gotten pretty good at picking it and coming off and tagging, and he's getting pretty good over there. But sometimes when it's a fast guy, you just got to uh, kind of just throw everything out and go for it. And sometimes you grab it like this, and sometimes you grab it like this, and just wing it over there and see what happens. There's Zim over there preparing for whatever comes his way and one thing about him today Bob that impressed everybody in our truck was whatever highlight they showed him he knew who was hitting mm -hmm. what game it was without even seeing who was up at the plate well this is one of the things we talk about in baseball you can't take somebody who's just an athlete and make him into a baseball player there has to be high IQ there has to be understanding of the game situations and Ryan Zimmerman has all of those things rolled into one. And I think maybe the one exception down through the years was Bo Jackson because he was so gifted. Yeah. You could eventually get him to do just about anything on the field that anybody could do. But guys like that, once in a generation at least. We have a bunch more of those with Ryan Zimmerman coming up Looking throughout the game. Here's Jerry Hairston who led off the game by fouling out to Ryan. Well, and you've been able to see him a lot longer than I have. And the one thing I've noticed is, first of all, how cool he is all the time. You know, whatever the pressure situation is and how smooth he is over there. You know, he never looks like uh, a ball is playing him. He always look like, looks like he's in a position to make the play. For an everyday ball player expected to perform at a high level, Ryan has a great demeanor about him. He's a lot like his manager in that never gets too up, never gets too down. Jim and I talked about that on his mass and video blog this week. You just can't ride a wave of emotion every at bat, every day over this long season. You got to have something left in your tank those last four to six weeks. And Ryan Zimmerman just has the perfect approach to this game. Three and one to Hairston. Well, he's had some very good teammates over the years. Dimitri Young is a guy like that. Ryan or Adam Dunn, you heard him after the three home runs last night with Debbie Taylor. And he's like, no, no different approach up there. Just, you know, same old song and dance for him. It's just another day at the ballpark. I mean, he he's another guy like Ryan Zimmerman that never gets too high, never gets too low, laughing every day. Desmond to his left. He'll end up near the bag when he lets it go. And that's five in a row for Luis Adelano. Headley coming up. Born here, grew up in the down in the Tidewater area, Norfolk and Virginia Beach. Made his debut the year he was drafted. Pardon me, Washington, North Carolina, NC, not DC. And the Silver Slugger and the Gold Glove last year. He started the 05 season as a third baseman yeah, at Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> he went to Savannah for four games, Harrisburg for 63 games, never did go to AAA. Which at that time was New Orleans, and the Nats called him up September 1st. That one just flares right by Adelano's left glove, and it's in the center field, and Chase Headley, two for two. And in this series, he's six for 11. Adrian Gonzalez last night off J.D. Martin the other way. Sinker, he goes with it. Full extension and rifles a home run into left field. A little bit later in the ball game, he's just going to go the other way again. Look at how smooth that swing is. Take the ball where it's pitched to you and dump it into left field off the wall. Yeah, he had singles in the eighth and scored in the ninth, was stranded. So he raises his batting average to 302. He's ninth in the league in total basis, fourth in runners in scoring position, seventh in homers, seventh in walks. Yeah. 
for some reason much better on the road. Well, he plays at the Grand Canyon out in San Diego. True. Petco Park. <laughs> but when we saw him, he was hitting in the 100s there, so his average has come up. Yeah. Nice change up by Adelano. A lot of different looks to Gonzalez. You're trying to roll a double play without letting this guy destroy you. Haven't seen a lot of high fastballs from Luis tonight. That's about as intentional as an unintentional walk will ever look. And for the second time now, Scott Hairston will bat with two runners on and one out. The kids get a free backpack. First 10,000 kids, 12 and under. When you come to the ball game on Sunday, the Nats and the Giants at 135. Signature Sunday autographs, 1215 to 1235 down by the dugouts. And then the kids get to run the bases after the game. Two on, one out. Last time in this situation, Scott Hairston lined a base hit to left. First pitch breaking ball outside. Well, he's already up to 42 pitches. He better start figuring out what he can throw for strikes and start sticking it in there. Gets the corner call there. Base hit by Headley. Walk to Gonzalez. You're not real wild about change-ups to right-handers, are you? No, I'm not, and, and especially when you don't have the command tonight. Adelano's all over the place, and you don't want to hang a change-up right here to a free swinger. Scott Harrison's looking to do one thing right here, and that's take a mistake as far as he can. You know, throws your sinkers. Try to get the ground ball. Looked off speed again. Popped up, and Pudge is right there. Didn't have to go too far. And that's the second out here in the third with Tori Alaba, a fellow catcher coming up who just picked up Pudge's mask for him. I didn't know that catchers would toss their mask over to the other catcher and then get it back. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, the catchers are taught, get the mask off, but hold it. And then when you know where the ball is and where it's coming down, then you get rid of the mask so that you don't end up tripping over your own gear. Well, and having caught in high school, you don't want to trip over your mask by throwing it too early. They don't knock it off too much anymore when they throw down to second either. Torialba couldn't stop a swing and a breaking ball away. You know, a lot of catchers used to knock their mask off and then throw to second base. That takes too long. Yeah. And now you see a lot of guys throw to second base and the mask winds up on the side of their head. A variety of off-speed stuff here from Adelano and the free-swinging Tori Alba who dumped that RBI hit in front of Josh Willingham is behind 0-2. Well, he seems to be satisfied with his off-speed stuff. That's fine. That's a beautiful pitch right there. Tori Alba swings way above it. Target well off the plate outside. Might have gotten too much of the plate, but he gets the pop up. Infielders converge. Desmond takes charge and makes the catch. Top of the order in the third. Nats are down by a run with Morgan coming up.
performance. Cabot Woodstain has one for us. Adam Dunn's three homers last night reminding us of April 21st, 2006. Alfonso Soriano, the previous Nat, to do that. He led off the bottom of the first with a blast off John Smoltz. He got Smoltz again in the third inning. And then in the eighth with two men aboard, he homered against Oscar Villarreal. And that's not an easy ballpark to hit one or two home runs with those big gaps at RFK, much less three. By the way, Soriano, those were homers number four, five, and six. And as we go back to the Montreal days, Tim Wallach did it. The Hawk, Larry Parrish, Gary Carter. This franchise has had a great history of some outstanding players. And the Hawk going into the Hall of Fame this summer, a couple of weeks. He was an MVP and a last place team in Chicago. Top of the order, here's Niger Morgan. Bounced out to short first time. In the year he won that MVP, he walked into Dallas Green's office and said, here's a blank contract, fill in what you will with whatever you want to pay me this year, and they paid him a half a million dollars. That's how badly he wanted to get out of Montreal. Hmm. Well, it must have been nice for him to play in front of some folks. The well-documented documented attendance problems as Montreal. And I remember seeing this when we would visit Montreal on occasion with networks and other ball clubs they had drawings and plans for an outdoor open air downtown Montreal Stadium and they could never get any financing for it and that's why we are sitting in this wonderful ballpark tonight breaking ball on the inside corner to Roger Bernardina and Matt Latos has been working under Rogers hands here struck him out looking first time with a fastball after a real good changeup. The heater comes and Bernardino is ready for it. And the Nats have their second base hit. Well, Rogers learning every day at this level. He choked up right here. He learned something after the strikeout the first time up. Gets the hands a little quicker through the zone. Gets that 95 mile an hour heater. And he gets a nice couple of bounces through the zone. And he's now hit safely in 10 of his last 12 starts. Right around 300 over that time. Roger came in tonight at 281. He's one for two. And here's Zimmerman, who bounced a hard single up the middle his first time. Well, and if you're Rick Eckstein and Jim Riggleman, you've got to be happy that. You, you got a guy who's making adjustments like a Bernardina. He's a young player as far as major league time, and that's what the game's all about adjusting at bat to at bat, pitch to pitch. Nice job there. Ryan Zimmerman likes those West Coast clubs. The Nats have visited Colorado, San Francisco, San Diego. Still yet to go to Dodger Stadium, but the Dodgers have been here. The one club in the league we have not seen this year, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Marlins behind Anibal Sanchez out in Phoenix later tonight. Zimmerman geared up on 2-0, and but it's way outside. Hot home run hitter next. But tonight it's a different night, different pitcher. Who knows what's going to happen? Adam has struck out tonight for the 101st time this year. So Ryan with a couple of homers lately has now hit six on the year here at Nationals Park of his 16. He got jammed over by the tarp. And called off Headley was Cabrera, the shortstop, 
running over to grab it. Second out of the inning with Adam Dunn coming up. Well, Rob told you about some of the good pitching we'll see. Strasburg, Matt Kane tomorrow, Craig Stam and Jonathan Sanchez Saturday, and then Levon against Madison Bungarner on Sunday. After the break, the Nats will go to Florida a week from tomorrow and open up a three-game series. That road trip will take them to Cincinnati for four and Milwaukee for three. And a reminder, our friends from D.C. 50 will join us here on Sunday for the 135 first pitch. You know, Rob, uh, John Riggins, and I know you've been on his show to visit with him. He asked an interesting question to me today about the second half of the season. When will we know when this ball club is going to do something? And I told him it'll probably be during those first 10 games because the Nats are one of the poorest road teams in the league. And when you come out of the break and have to go on the road for 10 games, I think that may be your second half answer right there. I think most ball clubs, you know, in 50 games, what kind of team you're going to have. This one has <laughs> been very difficult to figure out. And it's game 86. You catch the ball and uh, throw the ball well. This team is almost unbeatable. Their offense can hang with anybody's in the league. 0 2 to Adam Dunn. The difference is giving the other teams an advantage by giving them extra outs. Unearned runs, you know, pitchers always getting themselves in jams, especially early in the ball game. I mean, once again, you're chasing a run down here against a very difficult pitcher. You just want to try to not give the opponent, especially the opposing pitcher, any kind of confidence early in a ball game. Yeah. Jim Rugerman likes well played, low scoring games. He likes the chess match that takes place with the other manager. Bernardina started, then stopped, and Dunn strikes out for the second time tonight. Matt Lados living up to his advanced billing. Nets have two hits, but down by one. And large bag right now. <laughs> One nothing Padres after three. The well pitched game we were expecting from Matt Lados. And as I said earlier, after the rough start, Adelano gets the double play ball. He's very much in this game right now. Absolutely. I mean, Adelano had to bring his A game. This is one of the better pitchers we're going to face all year. Uh, guy very hard to hit off of, very hard to square up and hit home runs off of. Not going to walk a bunch of guys. Uh, so anytime he makes a mistake, we definitely have to take advantage of that. And for Adelano, uh, just try to keep them off the board. And anytime you face Adrian Gonzalez, uh, try to pitch around him. And if you have to pitch to him, uh, you know, just be very effective with your pitches. Make them, uh, you know, count when you throw them. And it's all about execution at this point for Adelano. Luis Adelano, 48 pitches, 27 strikes through three. 
He's given up a run on four hits, walked two, struck out one. Aaron Cunningham hit into that 1 6 3 double play. That's a scorcher right at Willingham. And it looked like Josh was starting to fight the lights there a little bit, but he kept the ball in his sights and took care of it. Well, and another thing, let your defense help you. You know, no reason to walk, guys. Got some pretty good defenders out there. And just, uh, you know, try to be economical here through the middle innings because you're already up to 50 pitches. Bottom of the order here, so he'd love to have a quick inning. So would Steve McCaddy and Jim Ruggleman. Chris Denorfia hit a bouncing ball to Desmond first time. He skies one to left. Willingham watching it. And how about Chris Denorfia, who didn't have a homer all year until a pinch hitting appearance last night, and now he has another 2 0 San Diego. Adelano's given up his ninth homer of the year. Adelano's made a couple mistakes tonight, keeping some balls up in the zone. That looked like a breaking ball away. It looked like it sank back up in the zone. Probably overthrew it, trying to make a perfect slider, and that's what happens when you hang sliders in the big leagues. And from what I've seen these last two nights, Chris Denorfia is definitely a high ball hitter. That was almost a carbon copy of this homer here last night. That other one was a little closer to the line. And there's a strike to Everth Cabrera, the number eight hitter. The Padres have hit 62 homers on the year now. Only the Astros with 54 and the Pirates with 53 have hit fewer in this league. And I'm not sure what that was. Did Cabrera swing at that ball after he was already out of the batter's box? Might have. How about that? This is a former Rule 5 guy. Padres had to keep him on the roster all year last year or lose him. Or at least have to offer him back. In the Rule 5 draft, they plucked him off the Colorado roster in 09. Three balls and two strikes now with the pitcher on deck. Well, Cabrera is going to dive in. You see that front foot move towards the plate, and then the pitch is not that close. And he does a good job getting out of the way. Phillies have picked up a run in the third and lead the Reds in Philadelphia two to one. Cincinnati's opened up a three and a half game lead over St. Louis now with the Cardinals losing today at Colorado to Ubaldo Jimenez, who's 15 and one. Adam Dunn on a two hopper. That'll bring up Lados to face Atalano. Christmas in July this weekend here at the ballpark. You can bring new unwrapped toys to the center field gate. From the time the gates open at any game this weekend through the fourth inning, the Nationals in partnership with the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve Toys for Tots Foundation will donate toys to needy children here in the D.C. community. That ball is hit hard by Matt Lados, who just hit his first major league home run. 3 nothing, San Diego. Matt Kane, who pitches here tomorrow night, hit four. You lay fastballs or anything in the middle of the plate, Rob, to these guys, and they're big enough to hit it out. Well, we told you he's 6'6", 220, only 22 years young. And he gets a sinker that stays up, and it just keeps on going. That's why we talk about pitchers are dangerous when they're just swinging free and easy. You never know. You swing hard, you might hit something. Some of his teammates chasing him into the tunnel there. <laughs> just told I think they were throwing ice down his shirt. I'm sure he'll get something special after the game. Yeah. They're negotiating with a fan out there to get the ball back for Matt's first major league homer. Usually there will be a two for one swap there. 
forget Heath Bell to sign one. He's an all star. I was just thinking the same thing. Get him to sign one and then give him the ball. How about that? He's a young man. He's going to do the deal. There's two baseballs. There's, There's three, three baseballs. baseballs. There's four, four baseballs. Four for one. See, Bob? Inflation. What a deal. <laughs> that kid's set for life. A good young man. Look, Mom, I won the jackpot. Wow. Now that's a stimulus plan for baseballs if I've ever seen them. Four for one. <laughs> Holy moly. Jerry Hairston's the hitter. He's fouled out to Zimmerman, grounded out to short. Very cool. He's going to give one to his buddy. A two up. Well, they're best friends now. Brian Zimmerman has been known to scoop up some baseballs. And that's it for the Padres. Bottom of the order strikes. Denorfia and Lados, 3-0. Tables on the Nats with the home runs. Chase Headley's had a good night with a double and a single. Luis Adelano had a decent night going until the fourth inning. And then Matt Latos, who's also pitching well, hits his first career home run. Well, Matt Latos has been on top of his game tonight. Inside heat. Gets Bernardina early. Nice big over the hand curveball on Adam Dunn. He's going to come back and throw a hard slider down and in. How about working ahead for Matt? They face Willingham, Rodriguez, and Kennedy in the Washington fourth. Well, that's his 50th pitch. Yep. The Nats made him throw 20 pitches in the second inning. Then he walked Rodriguez with one out and Desmond with two outs. So the Washington Nationals down by three here. Willingham skies one to left center. A ball's got some carry to it, but short of the track. Denorfia right there. That breeze is blowing again from the south toward the left field corner tonight. And Josh just got under that one a little too much. Well, remember, there's that six foot six arm angle that's coming downhill on you. And it looked like Josh got a hold of that, but he just hit it right back up that hill and hmm. flew out to center. Yeah. So against a guy six foot, maybe that's a homer? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a total different uh, level, I guess you could say, the ball's at. Plateau. Yeah. But with this guy, he's throwing downhill off a 10-inch mound. Rodriguez gets jammed. Everett Cabrera takes care of that. Geico President's race and Teddy had a big lead tonight for a while. He probably had a, about a 20 yard lead. He slows down on the stretch and then things got a little testy. Well, then he just 
He takes out eight. out eight. George W. had to mediate that little argument between the two presidents. It's all Tom Jefferson, the winner. Another hilarious version of the Geico president's race. Yeah, the uh, the honest one. A little perturbed. Basketball in there to Kennedy, who bounced out to short first time up. Oh, you're looking at him dropping the breaking ball. Ian Desmond at the inning continues. Matt Latos hit a home run, has a three run lead. He's not fooling around out there. He's going right at guys now. After doing lots of nibbling in the first two innings, he's got a little bit of a cushion, so doesn't have to nibble as much and deviate from the game plan just enough where he can become more of a power pitcher again. Kennedy reaching for an outside pitch. Adams always been a good left field hitter. Probably hitting 40 to 50 points higher here than on the road. One and two to the left hander Kennedy. And a bouncer. It's 2 2. Pitching in baseball today, we told you about Roy Oswalt's one hitter. John Danks won his game at home, one nothing, beating the Angels. But along with that, Rob, one of the big stories on a muggy 79 degree day in Chicago. Time of the game, one hour, 50 minutes. That's a pretty quick game. <laughs> That's a quick six innings anymore. And a 2 2. Kennedy can't wait to that one and get it upstairs. Six strikeouts for Matt Lados. He has a three run lead. To catch it and flick it to second. I think when you're kind of coming through it like this, you know, see, I mean, it's a lot easier for me to open up. For me to go to first, I have to catch it. I have to get everything turned this way now because you always want that pointing towards where you're going to throw. So there's just a lot more movement for me to get going towards first base instead of just a real easy flick to second. Does anybody describe how to be a gold glove infielder any better than Ryan Zimmerman? I don't, I've never heard a better teaching of how to be a third baseman 
at any level than what he <laughs> described today. But, you know, with any position or even a pitcher, he just described everything you need to know about throwing to your target, which is follow that front shoulder. Covering the bases with Ryan Zimmerman tonight. All 25 years old of him. He'll have a birthday September 28th. He's been so great in the first five full years of his big league career. We often forget how young he was when he got here. Not easy to be the face of the franchise. Battled injuries a couple years ago last year. Really came into his own. You know, and Ryan kind of shies away from that whenever he hears that. I think it bugs him a little bit, and we're glad it is like that for him. It was funny. Remember what he said after Strasburg's first game? He said, well, I had my 15 minutes of pain. <laughs> That's just the way Ryan is. He just wants to play ball. 3-2, and Adelano gets a fastball up and away and retires Chase Headley for the first time. That'll be Luis' second strikeout. Oh, evidently a Redskin fan from the early days of Zimmerman's life. From the baseball uni working back then. I wonder what drillers. What was the first name on that? Maybe, I don't know. D.C. Drillers. Tidewater, maybe. Tidewater. Norfolk. Virginia Beach. Ryan was 10 years of age when his mom, Cheryl, was diagnosed with MS. They have a very special relationship. The folks are up here whenever they can. Adam Kennedy moves to his right and throws out from short right field, Adrian Gonzalez. And, of course, the Zims Foundation raising money for multiple sclerosis research. There's mom and dad and his brother. He's a UVA Cavalier in that one. Ah, number 11 back then. Teammate of Mark Reynolds there. Ryan played some shortstop while Reynolds was at third. And then was playing third for UVA when the Nats drafted him. Scott Harrison, a base hit to left and a foul out to Rodriguez. Two outs here in the top of the fifth. Padres have out hit the Nats 6 2 and lead 3 0. Left side as if on cue to that guy wearing number 11. One, two, three in the top of the fifth. Pods by three.
quietly. The Nationals constantly ask him to go out in the community. He always says yes, but he also does a lot on his own. And there aren't cameras or photographers there to take pictures of what he's doing. But obviously he enjoys it, and it's something that he continues to do during the season and in the offseason as well, Bob. A wonderful teammate, a quiet leader on the ball club, and he's 25 years old. Already holds just about every Nationals franchise offensive record. Here's Ian Desmond to lead off the bottom of the fifth. On deck circle is empty at the moment. There's activity in the bullpen. Is Luis Adelano still in the game and might depend on what Ian Desmond does. And Luis has now gone to the on deck circle putting on some batting gloves. But if Desmond gets aboard Jim Riggleman might go ahead and make a move here. Miguel Batista. Desmond hits one to left. It's hanging up. Right there, Scott Hairston. That may keep Adelano in the game. Evidently it will. Let's fire up the smartphone AT&T trivia which pitcher from San Diego State has the most Major League Baseball wins. Wow. You know the Padres aren't televising tonight so I'm sure we have a lot of Padre fans hooked in from various outlets throughout the country and they surely know the answer to this. San Diego State. Well we have to know a little bit of their alums. Other than Steven Strasburg, right? <laughs> yeah, could it be Strasburg with two? <laughs> yeah. That would be a trick question. Could be. Yeah. Hmm. Adelano with two runners aboard struck out swinging back in the second. of Aztec players who've gone to the big leagues, including Greg Nettles, but obviously not a pitcher. ERA leaders, the Nats, have added a few clicks onto that Padre ERA. They were at 3.05 when they came in on Tuesday night. The 3.14, still the best in the big leagues. Aaron Hooray. How about Bud Black? Oh, yeah, you're right. God damn it! Bud Black, what did we say the other night? Won 121 games? Yes, he did. Oh, that's that's gotta be it. That's pretty good. One, two, three, Lato skips across the line, and he's skipping right through the order.
1926, your own great moment starts at Hager.com. Well, the crowd on a, an evening where the weather has broken just a bit. 91 at game time. Did Rob nail it with Buddy Black? Well done, sir. And Tony Gwynn, Hall of Famer, and Bud were teammates in 78, 79 seasons. Tony Gwynn voted into the Aztec Hall of Fame back in 1989. Bud Black went in in 1992. Hmm. Yeah, and Tony still holds a few of the point guard records on the basketball court out there. And by the way, you and I were trying to remember whether he won seven or eight batting titles. It was eight to tie Honus Wagner for the all-time leadership in that fantastic category. Adelano delivers and so does Tori Alba out to left center to start off the top of the sixth inning. Yorvi Tori Alba with a two for three night and he's three for seven in this series. Padres are racking up some hits again. In the first two games of the series, they had 26 and lost. Sometimes you're your own best friend. Home Depot doing more on defense. Luis Adelano over to Ian Desmond, over to Adam Dunn to get himself out of a tight jam. There you go. Had to wait a little bit. Nice feed. And he gets himself out of a jam. But he's giving up hits like crazy now. Aaron Cunningham. And going to third base, Torrey Alba, nobody out. Corner situation for the Padres. How about that? They have 34 hits in this series and haven't won a game yet. Well, I think Kansas City had 33 hits against us, and we took two out of three from the Royals. By the way, one, one more note on Tony Gwynn that I think is significant because we see very little of this anymore. He's one of only 17 players in Major League history who spent 20 years with the same team. All of them are in the Hall of Fame except for two guys. Pitcher Mel Harder of the Cleveland Indians and ironically, San Diego native Alan Trammell of the Tigers. We just don't see things like that anymore. Maybe Ryan Zimmerman will be that guy for the Nats. Busy San Diego box score hits all up and down the lineup, except for Jerry Hairston and Adrian Gonzalez and the number eight hitter, Everett Cabrera. But even the pitcher has gotten himself in the box score with Matt Lato's first major league home run. So the Padres threatening to break this game open in the sixth with Chris Norfia coming up and he homered last time up. I think it would be safe to say don't throw this guy anything upstairs. Joe Gibbs, alum of San Diego State, also in their Hall of Fame. Art Linkletter. I thought the people in Washington would like to know where Joe Gibbs went to college. Mark Grace went there, Marshall Falk. Fred Dreyer, Isaac Curtis. Very famous alums went to San Diego State. Mark McGuire's brother, Dan, was a quarterback there. Late 80s. And besides Steven Strasburg, Justin Masterson. The Cleveland Indians. Hard throwing, big, tall right hander. Got some good players come out of there lately since Mr. Gwynn's been the coach. Yep. Well, Tony was a little concerned about the realignment of the Mountain West Conference, but I don't think they'll have any trouble finding teams from cool weather sites and cities to come out to San Diego to play some baseball in February and March. I talked to him extensively today. I mean, he loves teaching, loves being a college coach. That's a jam job there. Zimmerman to second. Now they're coming home. And Adam Kennedy throws it nowhere near home plate. 
That would have been a very odd 5-4-2 double play. Scoring is Tori Alba. I guess the Nats figured they had a shot with a catcher running. But now it's 4-0 San Diego. Well, it's a hard hit ball right to Zim. Tori Alba was holding, so maybe Adam Kennedy had a chance. But the throw is way off line since Tori Alba scores and So two hits and an RBI ground ball in this inning, knocking out Luis Adelano, who goes five and a third. Pods by four. If you have time, you want to get on the right side of the ball because then everything's going towards first base. So that's like when you saw that little stutter step at the beginning, it's because I take a step to the right and then kind of get all my momentum going towards first base, which gives you obviously a better chance to make an accurate, strong throw. But uh, sometimes as you're running in, you decide whether to use the glove or the bare hand. I think if you can, you want to use your glove. I think a lot of guys use their bare hand way too much, and it's, it's too risky of a play. But I hope some local coaches have the DVRs running tonight. Probably show this to some of their kids. Do some teaching with it from the best in the business. Here's Miguel Batista for the Nats with the runner at first. One out in the sixth. And San Diego on top 4 nothing, Having out hit Washington 8-2 to two now. Well, and I think a lot of what Zim discussed today is having control of your body. Being in control of yourself helps you often in every sport but especially in baseball and a premier position like a third baseman coming in on a lot of those slow rolling baseballs. And I liked what he said about you know the higher percentage of the time use your glove mm -hmm. go to your glove doesn't take that much time to go to your glove catch the ball and pull it out and make the exchange and still make the play. You saw that last night with J.D. Martin fielding a bunt. Miguel Batista busy out of the bullpen this year. 32nd appearance, 44 innings. Opponents only hitting 222 against him, but at times he'll walk a few. Double play ball made to order. Desmond from Kennedy and a perfect 4 6 3 turned by the Nats. Their second double play of the night. Padres at a run and lead by four.
nation's capital. I wonder if we have fish tacos like they do in San Diego. Bring your family out to the ballpark. The Sunday Family Fun Pack ticket includes a seat, a hot dog, chips, and a soda, and it starts at $14. Visit nationals.com slash kids to purchase your Family Fun Pack tickets. Nets home with the Giants to wrap up the mythical first half of the season on Sunday. By the time the Nationals get to that so-called first half, they will have played 89 games. Matt Lato, 71 pitches, 45 strikes in five very effective innings. The Nats have two harmless singles against him. Zimmerman in the first, Bernadina in the third. Two walks in the second, nothing doing there. He's retired eight straight, and if Cabrera throws out the speedy Bernadina, it'll be nine. So the box score will reflect what we just talked about, and it's not a whole lot. Niger Morgan in this series, two for 12, with his 0 for 3 tonight. Adam Dunn, three homers last night, nothing against this right-hander this evening. Other than the Zimmerman single, he's pretty much shut down the middle of the order. Well, and he came after us with a lot of off-speed stuff. So give Latos a lot of credit uh, and Tori Alba for recognizing the power and the home run potential in this lineup. And he came out throwing a lot of change-ups. Uh, you know, you, you heard Ray Knight talk about he doesn't use a change-up a lot. And, and Tony Gwynn said the same thing. But he decided to go with more change-ups and off-speed break and stuff. And then once he got a comfortable lead after the two and the fourth, now he's just powering it right by everybody. 22 years of age. So just a good good game plan. And he's he's got some amazing stuff. Zimmerman hit it off the end of the bat. And it'll be run down. That's what kept it in the ballpark. It got right down to the end of the bat, and Hairston able to grab it out there on the track. Fantastic pitching matchup tomorrow night. Steven Strasburg, who narrowly missed pitching against his hometown team, will take on the Giants. Matt Kane for San Francisco, and he's having an interesting season with a good ERA of under three, but he's only six and seven. The Giants have a new young talent, Buster Posey, and Pat Burrell has been added to their ball club since the Nationals were out there in late May. Giants are reeling a bit. They, even though they've won three in a row, they're still five back in the West. So they straightened things out a little bit over the last few days. And you might want to make that four now as they won nine to three at Milwaukee today. So just in time to come here, the Giants have turned their fortunes around. Adam Dunn is all over the stat sheet now. First and extra base hit, second in the big leagues there. He reached 20 homers last night. The slugging percentage, the total bases, and the doubles. Yeah, he only had 29 doubles last season. 25 already this season. Going to be a delayed call by Mike Everett. Dunn's gone, striking out for the third time tonight. Matt Lato's 8 Ks.
Chase Headley's been good with the bat. So has the bottom of the order, including Matt Latos with the bat and, of course, his arm. Mowing down the Nats, and they went deep with Chris Denorfia leading the way in the fourth inning. Well, his second home run in two nights, but you saw the location, and then that one just trying to lay a fastball by Latos, and he lays into it in the left field for his first ever Major League home run. So the 22 year old young man, quite happy. Why not? Doing his job on the other side of it, too. Facing Miguel Batista leading off here in the seventh. And a heartbreaking ball for a strike. You know what time it is, Bob? No, it's almost 9 o'clock, isn't it? Almost 9 o'clock. You're going to find out where LeBron James is going to play basketball <laughs> next year. The future of our country hangs in the balance. Yes, it does. Sports as we know it. I just want to know what you're going to do for an hour. Are they going to make you wait an hour before he tells everybody? Look at Matt Lados, two for three now. Well, maybe he'll do some stand-up. I think he could do a variety show, like yeah. Carol Burnett. I know Chris Bosch, if uh, you saw him a few years ago, he did some really funny um, commercials trying to make the All-Star team. <laughs> he was acting like he was a, a limo driver and all this other stuff. He was pretty funny. So maybe his friends are going to help him out a little bit, do a little comedy act. Let me know when you find out, okay? I will. I know you're you're not interested, but big percentage of the world out there, Bob, that likes basketball. Well, oh, I like basketball. Last time I checked, it was it was a team out there on the court at the same time, not just one guy. It is a little reminiscent, though, of Jack Morris and his free agent tour many years ago around baseball. Remember that? Mm -hmm. He'd show up in his full length mink coat, fur coat, at different stops around baseball during the winter. That kind of turned into a circus. So baseball has seen at least something of this ilk before. But I don't remember Jack hosting a one hour special. 0-2 now to the leadoff man, Jerry Hurston. 0 for 3 tonight, 4 for 13 in the series. Padres have hit the Nationals 9-2. Well, I think of it from a baseball perspective as if he does choose Miami, will it create more interest down in South Florida so that fans go to baseball games? Why would that happen? You mean just excitement just about buzz. sports in general? Yeah, the excitement. They are getting a new stadium in two years, which will help. Getting a new stadium, maybe win a championship or two down there would help them. You know, our producer Chip Winfield brings up a great point. Maybe LeBron will f sign with the Birmingham Barons and go play double-A baseball like Michael did. I think LeBron might play better than Michael Jordan did. Michael Jordan couldn't hit the slider. Yeah. I did. Uh, Buck Martinez and I did a game down there during the lockout in 94 when Michael was in the lineup for Terry Francona. Little did you know, I played on the Barons in 95 and rode on the Michael Jordan bus. Yeah. I'll tell you, he was fun watching uh, go from second to home on a base hit. But he just never made it to second base that much. Two and two to Jerry Hairston. On a breaking ball, well off the plate, he strikes him out. And Joe Delpo, our uh, stage manager, just handed me a note. He said, Sugar Ray Leonard did the same thing to announce his retirement. 2 2 pitch, great slider right here. By Miguel Batista, H.H. Gregg showing you the grip, pulling it down tight. You get that little circle dot on the front of it. And Hairston can't make contact. Great Exmo shot right there. Chase Headley is next. He's had a good night and a great series. Two for three tonight, six for 12. 
Only thing he hasn't done is drive in any runs, but he has scored three. And Bud Black bumped him up to the number two spot in the lineup tonight, trying to stimulate things up there. Tony Gwynn on the bench tonight, 0 for 8 with a walk, first two games of the series. Hairston, who's been batting second, is 4 for 14. That ball well hit to right. Getting near the bullpen. Bernadina jumps and it's out of here. And the Padres lead 6 to nothing. Their third homer of the night. And evidently tired of seeing Washington hit balls out of this park. Well, I think he broke his bat and hit a home run. That bat ended up in two pieces. Kinetic right here. Inside fastball. Great effort by Roger Bernardino, but just traveled a little bit too far and too high, and it hits the back of the seat of one of our pitchers. Yeah, Tyler Clifford was ducking. Kinetic North America with a pitch track, providing world class technology to our national and homeland security customers. So the Padres come in with the third lowest home run total in the league, and they've hit three tonight to go up to 64. Popped up left side by Adrian Gonzalez. How about San Diego tonight? Six runs on 10 hits, and Gonzalez is 0 for 2 with two walks. Our copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Hairston Scott one for three. On a good note Jordan Zimmerman looks like he's progressing nicely from his Tommy John surgery heard on the pregame and talking glowingly about his last rehab performance but the bottom line is we're going to get pitching back in the next month and that'll also tell a different story in the second half of the season Scott Olson will be back Marquis will be back no when Jordan Zimmerman is going to be back August he will be a year removed from Tommy John you don't want to push him yeah, that, and that's the big thing. The Nats are trying to hold him back. Yeah, well, I mean, he's in the gate, nostrils flaring, ready to race. You can slow him down a little bit. He and Strasburg going into spring training next year. That's quite a duo. You start right there. Figure out the other three guys. So today he goes three innings, gives up one hit, strikes out five, walks no one for the Potomac Nationals against the Frederick Keys. But remember, the stats don't tell the whole story. Tomorrow, it's how his elbow feels. Feel. It's how he feels. And then you go to the next step. And we saw Jordan after he threw last week, and he felt fine the next day. Zimmerman on the run, and he throws out Hurston. Padres strike again. Base hit by Lados. Homer by Headley. Headley, and some more clinical defense at third by Zim. is hitting on this so he's not that fast so it's kind of a uh, 
It's not a high chopper, but it's a chopper where if it's a fast guy, I might have to take a first step in instead of taking a step back right there and go for it. But since Troy Gloss is running, you can kind of go back and field it, set your feet, and make a good, strong throw. But if uh, someone like maybe Unel Escobar or someone quicker on their team, on one of those that's kind of a chopper, you you might have to just do or die and go for it and make an off-balance throw because if you take that step back and get the big hop, he's going to beat it out and he's going to be safe anyway. So. Nobody does it better. Seventh inning stretch time, 6 nothing. <laughs> that young Nats fan still excited. Let's go back and look at Ryan Zimmer. We never get tired of watching his defense. Uh, H.H. Greg here on the Exmo. You see him grab it. Watching his runner go down the first base line. And he takes the ball out. And flicks it over to Adam Dunn, chest high. For the final out of the inning. Not much offense for Zim and the Nats tonight. Ryan's one for three. The only other base hit belongs to Roger Bernardina. Matt Lados has been fantastic. Eight strikeouts, 79 pitches, 57 strikes, and about to start his seventh inning against Josh Willingham. A ball game in Philadelphia, top of the seventh now. It's still Phillies two, Reds one. An interesting situation with Latos and the Padres, his age, and there's a base hit by Willingham in the left field. They're going to limit his innings to 150 to 170 no matter what, even if they're in a pennant race. So, like us and Steven Strasburg, come August, they may hold him out of a couple of starts. There's an inside fastball. He's just going to meet it out in front of the plate. Head down. He's tried to hit it hard somewhere, and he finds it right through the hole between short and third. Now, Rob, you throw out that number. Last year at three levels of baseball for the Padres, he threw 123 innings. So yeah. how do those numbers work together? Uh, it's a, it's about, you know, 30% more every year. That's what they're going off of. You know, whether it's Felix Hernandez and the way he did it, you could look back at Matt Cain's numbers. Uh, Justin Verlander did like 190, 190. Uh, 200 then 240 last year where he led the league in strikeouts. I, I think Tim Lincecum a lot of the pitchers are doing uh, Very similar things and I don't think it's just limited to because he's 22 years old or Strasburg's 21. I, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, You know the amount of professional innings pitched and Lincecum came up to the big leagues uh, He threw about 180 innings one year and went 227 the next year 225 last year but in Lincecum's case, uh, you know, they felt he could handle that strain. But if you go back and look at some of the guys like Felix Hernandez and uh, Justin Verlander, they definitely held those guys back for two, three, four years before they unleashed them. And we saw what Verlander did last year when he went 240 innings. Same thing with Felix Hernandez's first 240 innings last year. I felt that Felix should have won the, the AL Cy Young Award last year. He was fantastic. Yeah, there were lots of glitches in the Cy Young last year on both sides. Kennedy will flip one down the left field line. That is a fair ball. Very nice. Right in front of Harrison. Pudge Rodriguez back into second base. And the Nats have two men aboard for the second time tonight. Ian Desmond coming. Willie Harris steps to the on-deck circle. Adam Kennedy gets a looks like a change up down and away and he just strokes it in the left field. A different approach here now later in the game against Latos and that should get the bullpen of the Padres moving around. Ian Desmond has walked and lined out to left. Doug Slayton the left hander Joel Peralta the righty. Desmond seeing the ball better. Remember when he was struggling? Yeah. He was waving at those breaking balls and missing them by plenty. And for the last four or five games, he's been spitting on those pitches and making the pitcher at least get the ball over, and he's had some good results. Well, I think we see something similar between Desmond and Zimmerman. When they're attacking and too aggressive, they're jumping at the ball. Right. And they, they 
basically are almost jamming themselves. And now they're both kind of comfortable up there. They're real quiet at the plate. And they let the ball get in on them a little bit longer. Latos does not get the call in the fastball. 2-0. Willie Harris to hit for Miguel Batista next. Barring a double play here. Adrian Gonzalez trying to cut off as much room as he can on the right side of the infield. Playing behind Adam Kennedy. Two on, one out. Desmond hits it hard to right center. That ball is run down by Denorfia. Both runners return. Two outs. Desmond's second line drive out into the outfield tonight. Denorfia's first step catches this ball. It's a great jump. This ball is spanked into right center field. He's on his horse. He goes all the way up near the wall, turns around, knows he's got runners on base, gets the ball back in. But this ball is just a fastball away. And as you said, Bob, let him get in on him a little bit longer, tracking it. He's all over it. Left-hander Joe Thatcher, victimized by Adam Dunn last night. And Willie Harris will get a chance to pinch in here with two on and two out. Willie having a rough year at a buck 54. Four for 23 with five RBIs as a pinch batter. hit to right field. Bud Rodriguez around third. Pat Listash will hold him. Cunningham got to that ball in a hurry. You can't run yourself out of an inning no. when you're down by six and the bases are loaded. And Cunningham was way shallow in right field. So he was looking to try to make a play at the plate. No, because that one run doesn't really help you that much. A big inning helps you a lot more. You're down six runs right here. Well, Felix Hernandez, I wanted to give you these numbers. When he was 19 years old, 191 innings. At 20, 190 innings. At 21, 200 innings. At 22 was when the Mariners finally unleashed him. 238 innings pitched last year, 34 starts. Was 19 and 5 with a 2.5 earned run average. Kind of a pattern with younger arms nowadays. Plus, you have so much money invested in them, too. Like 40 years ago, where they gave you a pair of spikes and a glove and said, Go get them. Tonight, we'll give you this number 17,364. Bob, Rob, and Debbie here on Masson HD. It's all Padres, and that's trying to change that here with Niger Morgan. We'll take a fastball high in the zone. Morgan, a ground ball, two fly balls tonight, 0 for 3, 2 for 12 in the series. Nats need a base hit here to get this ballpark alive, get on the board, and have a chance here in the last three innings. That won't do it right at Hairston in and over. Niger Morgan, two for 13 in the series. It's all Padres, 6 nothing.
by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Your local Ford dealer invites you to experience Ford like never before. Ford, drive one. And by H.H. Gregg. We make buying TVs and appliances simple. H.H. Gregg, price and advice guaranteed. On to the eighth, this one goes. 6 nothing, San Diego with Mr. Lincoln presiding over the beautiful mall tonight. Every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Miller Lite Party Night, Nationals Park. Get a scoreboard pavilion seat and a drink voucher for 20 bucks, 22 for prime games. Come early, pregame happy hour at the Miller Lite Scoreboard Walk Bar featuring brews for five bucks. Joel Peralta worked two thirds of an inning last night in the sixth. And then in the seventh, gave up the Kristen Orfea home run. Mop up duty for the Nats bullpen as Matt Lados has the Nationals shut out. I think we've probably seen the last of Mr. Latos. Well, if it holds up, Rob, he'll be 10 and 4. His ERA will go down from 262. What about the batting average again? So yeah. That's probably going down to about 180 or so. Although the Nats did get three hits in that inning. More than doubling their total from the rest of the night. And Peralta, a one hopper. <laughs> That's a little more than a comebacker right there. And he grabbed it on the glove side. And Tori Alba, a tough out tonight. Your beats hit the ball hard three times. It's like a fastball. He just takes it right back up the middle, and Peralta fields his position nicely. Here's Aaron Cunningham, one for three. Come back on some of the numbers. Verlander, at 22 years old, 186 innings. Next year, 201. The next year, 201. And then last year, as he led the American League in strikeouts, went up to 240. 19 and 9. There's another young buck is uh, David Price has done a great job down with Tampa this year. Mm -hmm. Another product of the collegiate ranks mm -hmm. out of Vanderbilt. And Tony paid Steven Strasburg a nice compliment today too. He said that uh, when they were talking in an interview he, he talked about the hitting and stuff and he couldn't believe how much stuff Steven Strasburg retained from his coaching days. Look out, folks. A scorcher off the bat of Cunningham. Then the counts are one and two. Aaron Cunningham is a product of the junior college ranks, Everett Washington. On our first pick, Bryce Harper, junior college. That's right, Southern Nevada. Norfie has had a two home run series. One out here in the eighth. Padres have doubled up on the Nats and hits. 10 5 and lead 6 0, trying to salvage a game of this series. Padres are still one of the best road teams in baseball at 22 and 16. Way outside the strikeout, two down. Fourth inning, Ford drive of the game. Is it Denorfia? Is it Latos? I guess you could take your pick. Oh, we'll give it to Denorfia because he's from Connecticut. And he takes it almost all the way to the Nutmeg State off of Luis Adelano. So the Ford drive of the game. 
and a Chris Denorfia. Now, how many home runs do you say he has now, career? Uh, he now has five career home runs. <laughs> two in the last two nights. He likes the warm weather here. With both of those pitches, and you called it, high ball pitches up in his little shin area, and he just jacked them to left field. There aren't too many right-handed batters who are notorious low ball hitters. One ball and no strikes to Denorfia. Longtime Reds prospect. Another guy out of a small school, Wheaton College in Massachusetts, a Division III school where he was an All American and hit 467. The thing for kids to remember it doesn't matter where you play, you just have to play. And if you're good, the scouts will come find you. They'll find you. The Dorothy had a grand total of two at bats in the big leagues with Oakland last year. Tommy John surgery three years ago. And two strikes, bases empty, two outs here in the top of the eighth. And Peralta shows some strikeout stuff. Two Ks, Nats running out of time. Roger Bernardino, speed, power, grace in the outfield. He'll lead off in the bottom of the eighth. Zimmerman, Dunn, and hopefully more to follow. With all the other guys considered, the story of this game is Matt Latos. He's done it with the bat with a couple of hits, and Rob Dibble, seven outstanding innings for him. Well, we talked about that Latos should be on the All Star team. He has the lowest batting average against in the major leagues, and he came in and showed tonight why he should be in Anaheim. Mowed down our hitters, eight strikeouts, controlled the tempo of the game, great off speed stuff, and then. And he got a shot to help his ball club with his bat. Went two for three with his first major league home run. And the 22-year-old that was actually born in Alexandria, Virginia, but grew up in the Miami area. Had a heck of a night. Now he turns it over to a very competent bullpen. Lou Gregerson victimized by the Ryan Zimmerman walk-off homer here Tuesday. But he's had a very good season. 90 pitches, 59 strikes. For Latos through his seven really good innings tonight. Struck out eight, walked two, five hits. Bernardino one for three with a base hit to right. Hey. On 
unless Heath Bell needs some work, the Nats might go through this whole series without seeing him. One one. Doug Slayton and Jimmy Lett, the bullpen coach. One to the scoreboard. Right off the Florida Arizona score. He's digging for three, but he'll come back now. Got to be conservative running the bases when you're way down. And Roger Bernardino has a two for three night. He hit that ball 375 feet. Gets a slider down and in, right in his wheelhouse. He scalds it into right center field off the wall. Never want to make the first out or the third out at third base. He remembers that right as he's going around the corner, and he says, whoa, we're down 6-0. I'll go back to second. And maybe he looked up and saw Pat Listash with the stop sign. You're supposed to pick up your coach about that time. Well, and then you have your big hitters coming up, of course, Zimmerman Dunn Willingham. And the play's right in front of him, though. Well, if he's just watching the ball in right center field, he, he doesn't really need to pick up that list. Ash. Ryan one for three with a base hit up the middle. So Gregerson has faced two hitters in this series and given up six total bases. Well, they know this guy throws a lot of sliders. at the very tip of the strike zone. Two and zero pitch right here is going to be another slider that's at the top of the zone. And that's low and away ball three. He tried to sneak a fastball in the outer half. Didn't want to come anywhere near the strike zone with it, though. He was trying to get Zim to go fishing on it. Oh, go away just yet, Ryan. Three and two. You know he's going to throw a slider here, and he throws a slider at the knees. Gets the call a little bit low, but nonetheless, over the heart of the plate. Two pitch with nobody out. That's one away. Two on. Nobody out. With Adam Dunn coming up. First Washington National in four years with three homers in a game. Well, he had a great approach. New Garland would go soft stuff away. Banged a couple of change-ups away off of him, and then Thatcher was just trying to make contacts. Hit it hard somewhere, he said, on the breaking ball, and he crushes it for a home run. 12 total bases, 5 RBIs last night. 
He has struck out three times tonight. And now he has a base hit. Bernardino will scamper home. The Nats are on the board. It's a 6-1 game. And Adam Dunn now has six RBIs in this series. Well, they're trying to pound him away. He gets a sinker away, and he smacks it into left field. So, so far, our team is all over Gregerson. He still has not retired a batter in this series. Three hits and a walk. And Josh Willingham will be next. That gets the San Diego bullpen scurrying again. Right-hander Mike Adams. Sometimes you get that starter out of the game. Latos uh, pretty much dealing on our guys all night. They're all excited that he's in the showers, and now you take it out on the bullpen. Josh Willingham, a base hit last time, one for three. Ceiling drops on the low floor. Gotta be ready for it. Probably gonna see another one. Oh, he throws you that beat fastball away. Nowhere close to the zone. Knows what kind of pitcher he is. He's a slider pitcher and he's going to throw 90% sliders, maybe 93% sliders. Oh, Fastball up. No, that was a bad sidearm slider. Oh, you're right. Yep. You say he, he tried to cut it and sweep it and got nothing on it. Yeah, it looked pretty straight. Outfield plays Willingham pretty much straight away. The Norfia just a few steps toward left center. I hope he does another one of those. Josh crushes it. Instead, Willingham will hit a double play ball. 6 4 3. Over to third base, Zimmerman. Two outs now. Another slider. Gets the ground ball. 6-4-3. We roll it over. Now Pudge will have to keep it alive with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Pudge Rodriguez is 0 for 2 with a walk. Big breaking ball that he can't reach. Hit foul came up and hit Pudge on his follow through. And the count quickly 0-2. Center. Nats were building a promising inning. The double play ball took care of that. They settle for a run. Padres by five into the ninth.
for the top of the ninth inning. And, of course, we are covering the bases with Ryan Zimmerman. Adam Dunn told me today he is very deserving of the name team leader. And here's more from Ryan on the topic. I don't think leaders should look at themselves and say, I need to do this or I need to do that. I think it just comes naturally, whether you go out in the way you play or whether people ask you questions or you talk to other people. But uh, I don't feel any pressure or anything like that as far as I need to do this or I need to do that. I just go out and play the way I play and go about my business, and hopefully that helps us win. Now, Ryan's first roommate in pro ball in Savannah, Georgia, was his current teammate, Ian Desmond. And Ian told me even back then, Ryan was a... Uh, very, very much a leader. He said he was a shy guy at first, but everybody was blown away by his presence. He was humble then, and he is the same now. And Ian describes Ryan as business-like, reliable, and a good guy to have around. Bob? Well, I think reliable may be the best of all. Day after day, it's a game like that, this baseball, for six months, and really about seven and a half months if you count spring training. Your teammates have to be able to depend on you. Doug Slayton will take the mound for the Nats in the ninth with Everett Cabrera, Oscar Salazar, and Jerry Hairston, the schedule hitters. Salazar to hit for Gregerson. Cabrera 0 for 8 in the series. It's a breaking ball right down about his shoe tops. Adams continues to throw for the Padres, indicating we may indeed get through this whole series without seeing Heath Bell. But with the Padres heading for Colorado, maybe he needs to be well rested. The way the Rockies are going and the way they've been getting some things done in the late innings. This one out to center for Niger Morgan, and in front of him, it'll be Kennedy. Matt Kane, Steven Strasburg tomorrow. Two of the best young right-handers, of course, in baseball. Kane doesn't have the wins and losses to show for it this year because of a lack of run support. Strasburg will be trying to get above the 500 mark. And we'll get you going at 6.30 with Nats Extra. Johnny and Ray right here at the ballpark. First pitch, 7.05 for you folks coming down on a Friday night. Fireworks after the game. Salazar pounds one out to center. Niger Morgan there. Two quick outs for Slayton. Top of the order now with Jerry Hairston. Nationals have the bottom of their order due up in the ninth. They, of course, have already won the series. Against a high quality ball club. It'll be a four and three homestand unless they stage an amazing comeback here. Evidently, Colorado's nine in the ninth at home against St. Louis two nights ago. A modern record. It had never happened before in the modern era of baseball. Really? Heard that today. Hmm. Nine in the ninth. Two three run home runs off the closer. And have the Padres hit another homer? Yes, they have. Jerry Hairston with his sixth of the year, and they've hit four home runs tonight in response to the Nationals' four last night. You know, it's sometimes perception. Isn't always the same as reality, Rob. San Diego has scored more runs by six than the Nats tonight, and also for the entire season, more runs than Washington. Well, and with their fantastic pitching and defense, that's why they're in first place in the NL West. But location of some of these pitches, and Doug Slayton hasn't been getting regular work, so. 
Had him done drifting with that ball and missed it. Could be charged with an error. There doesn't. Right here, the ball seems to be taking a different turn at the end. And it is an error on Adam Dunn, his fifth of the year. That keeps Headley alive. He's three for four with a double, single, homer. Padres have never had someone hit for the cycle. Not even Tony Gwynn, huh? Nope. Hmm. Not even Kurt Bavakwa. Fastball up and in, two and two. You wondering where LeBron's going? He's going to Miami. He wants to play with uh, Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Wow. Now they still play with one ball during a game, right? Yes, they do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three and two to Headley. Remember Nate Colbert of the Padres hit five home runs in a doubleheader once. One of their most impressive offensive feats ever. There's Zimmerman over at third. Wide throw in. Adam Dunn has it. Well played at both ends. We're covering the bases with Ryan Zimmerman. You hit it down there. He'll cover it for sure. Johnny Holiday, Ray Knight, will be back with you in Nats Extra Post Game. I guess this is the old adage of you can do something, we can do it better. Nats had four last night out of the park. The Padres come back. They hit four home runs tonight. Yeah, which is something that they don't do very often. But what I was impressed with was Matty Latos. My gosh, you know, he is not that far behind Steven Strasburg, buddy. Uh, setting behind on plate. He threw the ball 92, 93 most of the time, but he was able to get the ball up to 97 miles an hour, Johnny, with a great curveball, uh, nice command, and for his 10th win, if it holds up, and dropped his league leading batting average against down to 189. Well, the game is not over to the ball club hits in the bottom of the ninth. At least I remember that's the case. That's exactly Let's right. Let's go to Bob and Robin, see if they can pull this baby out tonight. All right, gentlemen, we like your moxie. It's going to take a miracle finish for the Nats to sweep this series. Three weekend series in July at home for the single-A Potomac Nationals, showcasing our players of the future. Affordable ticket plans, 703-590-2311. Edward Mujica for the Padres to close this thing out. 26-year-old right-hander. 67 games last year. And a busy reliever again this time around. He will face Kennedy, Desmond, and then a pinch hitter. Kennedy rips 
one up the middle. The Nationals have six hits now in the last three innings after Matt Latos gave them in the first six innings just two. Kennedy's two for four. Desmond coming up. He's hit the ball hard, unrewarded twice. Well, as always and as expected, the Nationals will give you a very hard finish. Last couple of innings, they put a lot of guys on base. That's what all my minor league managers used to teach. Just give them a finish. Try to bring the tying run to the plate. Michael Morris next for the pitcher. The Nationals team never quits. They're always hustling, too. Desmond takes a strike on the inside corner, 1-1. Steven Strasburg, Matt Kane tomorrow night, 7.05. And a bouncer up the middle. Cabrera, Hairston, and they go 6-4-3. Each team now turning two double plays on the night. And Michael Morse, the final hope for the Nets. Well, Rob, you, you kind of watch the San Diego team six times all year. Don't get to see them a whole lot. But it's the kind of a ball club you wish them well in the second half of the season. You kind of root for clubs like this. They play the game the right way. They're kind of like maybe with, with less power, except for tonight. They remind you of Minnesota. They pitch well. They defense well. They play well home and road. And they're involved in a tight division race. Well, they remind me a lot of the Marlins, too. Their payroll's $37 million. Wow. And they're thinking about trading Adrian Gonzalez, who does have another year on his contract for $5 million, an option for next year. One of the greatest bargains in baseball, without a doubt. Yes, sir. So if they do trade Adrian or they keep him, it's not that expensive. So for this payroll, this team... Solid defensively, outstanding pitching. Reminiscent of all those Angels teams that Bud Black was a part of. With Mike Socha over in L.A. It's about fundamentals. Just try to play the game, as Jim Riggerman will say, cleanly. Mm -hmm. Play a clean game. All Padres tonight with Matt Latos leading the way. Mowing down hitters early, making a few adjustments after he walked two in the second inning. But as Rob said, he got his lead with, with the hard stuff, and that was it for the Nats. A final look at the Reds and Phillies. They traded runs in the eighth inning, and going into the ninth, that's Citizens Bank Park, Phillies three, Reds two. Two two to Michael Morse. will do it. Padres salvage the final game of the series and beat the Nationals decisively tonight. 7-1 to one for their 50th win of the year. As usual, they played errorless ball. For Rob Dibble and Debbie Taylor, Bob Carpenter, Padres 7, Nationals 1. Join us tomorrow night, Mass and HD. The Nats open a series with the Giants, Kane and Strasburg. Johnny and Ray at 6.30. This has been a presentation of Masson. Stay tuned now. That's Extra with Mr. Holiday and Night coming right up. And from the booth, so long for just a while.